All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for attending today. It's Oh, we're recording now, so that's a good reminder to all of us that this is public and going out there. So what you're said is being recorded. Um, we will. I'm Misty Wharton. I'm the chair of the Reclassification Committee and also the superintendent of Sucker Valley School District. We will go through here, have everyone introduce themselves, and then Mr. Weber is going to give us um, some overarching themes and what our charge is, and then we'll hear some public testimony. So we'll start. We'll go to Russ. Uh, Russ Bolin, Athletic Director, of Roseburg High School. Jennifer Cabisto, Superintendent, Central School District. Marshall Haskins, Senior Director, Athletic Board and Public. Dave Williams with the Oregon Officials Association. Dan Dugan, Perry Dell School District. Uh, Rick Arger, Principal at Elmira High School. Jamie Youngman, Principal at Wash River High School, the 3A218 at large. Representative. Peter Weber, OSA Executive Director. Mike Scott, Superintendent Hillsborough. Miley Tolan, Secondary Director for Lincoln County School District. Scott Olson, Principal, Horizon Christian High School. Right here with the staff. Scott Stamp with the staff. Gibby Reynolds with the staff. Billy Foster with the staff. Okay. And there's other staff members hiding on us in the background there. Are you okay, Kelly? Yeah. Okay, great. No mention of on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lindsay Presio, uh, school board member, is on Zoom. Uh, Mari Reba Saldana. From McLaughlin is on Zoom from Foray, as well as Margie Lynn representing the OACA from Powder Valley. She is on Zoom as well. Okay, right. thank you. So, again, welcome everybody. Just a reminder we start each meeting with this, just a reminder about the, the charge set forth in the, the handbook and then the additional charges set forth by the executive board. Um, again, some of the changes to <clears throat> how students are counted came through the competition of ADM task force. You see that reflected in the numbers that we are working with. Uh, those were proposed and adopted by the board and, and the delegate assembly in those instances using grades nine through 11, a three-year average, adjustments to the SES factor <clears throat> and changes to how option school students are counted in a, dis in a, uh, a school district. The uh, classification of the districting committee is charged with using those numbers when they're putting together their proposals. Um, so as we move forward, and as you've seen from the first four drafts that are out there, those are the numbers that they're using. The additional charges set forth by the committee or by the executive board and include uh, changing uh, classification cutoff points or potentially the number of classifications to investigate and report on the feasibility of that, as well as playing as local as possible during the regular season and looking at separating classifications and districts differently in football uh, through the football ad hoc committee. We've mentioned that before and including in the updates, the football ad hoc committee and the sport of football is being done separately as we've done the last couple of years through that committee, recommending uh, that group will make recommendations to the executive board later this school year, um, given the unique challenges facing that sport with numbers and different things. So those things will be done differently. So when we're talking about classifications and districts specific to these proposals, football is not a part of that. It's worked on by a separate group. And then as we discussed last time as well, uh, petitions to play up or petitions to play down. At this point, I believe we received 15 petitions to play up. We've received five uh, petitions to play down uh, that the board is uh, reviewing. They reviewed some of those this morning at a work session. Uh, and those were due on October 1st, uh, as well as any you know, at the end of any time block, any cooperative sponsorships, any independent status requests, those things all stop at the end of the time block and then have to be renewed and started over for a new time block. So those things are in place as well. And again, in terms of the process, uh, this group meets today, meet two more times in November, uh, and then the final meeting, December 13th, the executive <clears throat> board and the delegate assembly uh, executive board in the morning, delegate assembly afternoon to make their final decision. So that's the timeline as well. Okay. And so does Kyle have anything? Kyle, do you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Brad, anything that you need no, to add? You. Okay. We're moving forward. Um, so at this time, 
we get to hear testimony from the people in the room and the people uh, joining us via Zoom. And we're gonna hear testimony from the Zoom representatives first, and then we'll work down from 6A to 1A. Uh, there'll be a five minute allotment to each person that wants to testify. And then the committee uh, will likely have questions and we'll spend some time asking those questions for clarification. Uh, we've read through all of the written testimony that we received and I forget the final number. I think we're almost at 60, is that right, Brad? 64. Like 64. Um, and so some of you have been diligent and we've read that and that we all are working with that knowledge and we'll come out of this meeting today and go into a work session. Um, I can say that there's no real strong push for six or five. We're still, it's still, everybody has uh, varying views. There's not a clear winner. And so you saw that we put out proposal three and four last time. And we're going to try and really drill down on this work session and come up with one proposal. So, uh, so Kyle can, and I think we have some students presenting today too, right? So that's exciting that they're going to participate in the process. So if we can start with our Zoom. Right, we're going to call on Brandon Piper. Please unmute that uh, name there. So we for you. Unmute Kelly, I'll mute your So you your five minutes begins now. Go ahead, Sue. Uh, hello, my name is Chance. I'm a McKay student athlete uh, at McKay High School. Uh, so, uh, excuse me for being a little nervous, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best to keep it straightforward. <laughs> okay, so we want to. Our overview is we want to avoid uh, from going. You know, playing over the mountains on our games. Uh, for one, pretty much because it creates a lot of uh, late nights for us especially like if we have school through the weekdays, like if we, let's, let's say we had a game on Tuesday and after it, we'd probably get back around like midnight to one. And then plus we'd have to get up early in the next day to go to school. So it kind of like disrupts our like class schedule and our sleeping schedule as well. And same with uh, number two, same for the, with our uh, like family members who want to attend the game. It might be hard on weekdays to, for them to attend because they might have work and plus it's like a three hour drive. So they might not have the chances to get there on time or they probably, yeah, they probably won't have the chance to get there. But um, so, and number three, there's, we pretty much miss a full day of school trying to get there ahead of time. And so we might like, like a lot of us students get out I don't know. Like, okay, it's the nervous thing kicking in now. <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, that is that. And um, oh, and coaches sometimes. A lot of our coaches have like work and other things outside of school. So it might not correlate into the times of like football. And so like they might, a lot of our coaches might not be able to make the games, especially when it's a three hour drive all the way over there. And Overall, I don't think it's the best the best fit for us to go over spending that much time over in mountain games. I feel like it, like it it does something to us. Like I don't like that's hard to explain, but like I feel like that three hour drives like puts us in like a I don't know bad mojo, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting nervous now. But that's pretty much yeah, pretty much that's what we came up with it like a quick sum. But yeah, thank you for our time. <laughs> Way to go. Thank you. How many students are with you there in your room? Uh, there's, uh, there's nine. There's uh, nine students with us right now. Awesome. Well done. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Way to participate in the process. That's awesome. Thank Any you. questions for the kids? Okay. Next, Kyle. All right. Good job. We're going to mute you now. Good job. Go on, next person. Next one is uh, Steve Frank. I'm going to ask you to, um, if I can have to ask you to unmute momentarily, and your five minutes will begin. Here goes Frank. <clears throat> Hi, folks. So as we all know, I'm not telling anyone anything new. This last year and a half has been uh, pretty earth shaking uh, with COVID and the impact of COVID. I mean, I could go through all the impact, but but we know we know what it's been. And it's devastated a lot of programs. Uh, I know, especially on the uh, 4A programs, um, 
and 5A programs, it's it's been pretty rough. Uh, a lot of the, I, I'm looking mostly at, at girls soccer. Uh, a, a lot of the programs don't have JV anymore. Uh, we have really nothing to build on and with. I know if I'm not mistaken, um, I think Dallas ended up not having a girls soccer team this season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the disparity between teams has grown and I notice it with a lot of the scores because I will look at uh, boys soccer, girls soccer, and even football. Um, and so you have a, a growing issue of participation um, lapses. Um, uh, games have been canceled. Um, the, it's, it's really been a mess uh, and it's been really tough on the kids. So I think anything you folks do to make it worse would, would really be a shame. Um, anything you would do to create more disparity. I mean, we, at least we have a, a break now where if they, if the other team scores eight runs or has, there's an eight run difference, the game stops. So these eight zero scores you see, they're not really eight zero scores, a lot of them. They could be 15 zero scores. Um, so what I'm gonna ask you to do, and I don't know if it will get any kind of a, uh, if that I'll get support for this or how you folks will feel about it, but I'm gonna ask you to suspend the decisions and to spend, suspend enacting any changes uh, for a year. So have, have discussions, have meetings, um, have uh, you know um, work sessions, ideas, but where we're at now and where we've been at for the last year and a half is not really representative of what's going to be happening um, coming up. And you're looking at, I believe it'll be a four-year decision more or less. I know, you know things can change, but you're looking at a four-year decision. So you're going to base a lot of what that those decisions will be based on a really problematic time. And the more, the longer this goes on, um, and hopefully it won't be all that much longer, uh, the more difficulty there'll be for these teams and the more disparity. So again, if, if there's a way you can do it and you'd be willing to discuss that, uh, suspend, just hold on with making that change. It's rough enough as it is right now, but if you go to 5A, it seems to me, I mean, sorry, if you go to five classifications, it seems to me, um, you'll be looking at a lot more disparity, at least in my understanding of it. And uh, any time you're gonna have those teams on the bubble and you're gonna move them up, especially with what's going on right now, they're, they're, you want there to be competition, I'm sure. OSAA wants there to be competition. You want teams, you want people to feel good about themselves. Uh, you want the kids to feel good about themselves and be successful. And the way things are right now, uh, there's a lot of, of <laughs> lack of success going on and a lot of trouble with a lot of different programs. So I don't know if there's a way to get all that information. If you have the information, you have all the schools there, you have the AD or many of the schools and you have the ADs and, um, I, I think it seems to me that the 4A, especially the 4A and 5A schools um, are, are struggling right now. So that's, that's my piece. Questions for Steve? Steve, I'm sorry, I probably missed this. Where, where are you represent, what are, where are you from? Well, I, I don't necessarily represent anyone. And okay. I, I'm, uh, as a former city councilor and candidate for state Senate and a uh, union person, president and everything else, I make it clear, you know, when I'm talking for myself, I'm talking for myself. Okay, great. But I have, I do, I do, I do have vested. Obviously, I have vested interest in a in a 16 year old girl. So yeah, I, I, uh, we I, we all have one of those in our life. I think. So. Yeah, I'm, quite, I'm quite vested in this. I was just trying to get a kind of an understanding of where you're geographically located, what region. That's board. fine. I'm, I, well, I'm yes, I I live in Staten, Oregon. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.
And thank, right. thank you very much. I appreciate having the time to uh, express myself. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we're going to ask Gil Gonzalez to unmute, or we're going to ask him momentarily. And then Brad for Spiel, he has information in your packet. Sorry about that. That yeah. number will be said in just one moment. Gil, just one second, I'll pull up your information here momentarily. Buell is number. Thirty-two. Thirty-two in your packet, and then Buell, take it away. Your five minutes begin. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Again, my name is Buell Gonzalez. I'm the athletic director at Baker High School over in Eastern Oregon. Um, I gave this presentation to the redistricting committee uh, four years ago, and uh, since then, I well, I moved from Brookings to Baker, so it's. Uh, I thought I, you know, the original presentation that I made still, still stays with it. So, uh, you know, um, the biggest issue that we have for schools our size, uh, and then you know the location is uh, travel for league games and time out of the classroom and things like that. So, when I was in Brookings, uh, I was working with uh, our IT director, who happens to also be uh, the head girls basketball coach. Uh, Chris Schofield. And, uh, you know, he spent some time in Wisconsin and he talked about how they had regional leagues and it wasn't, uh, you know, the classification, uh, your league makeup wasn't tied to your classification. And uh, when I was going through the presentations and reading the ones that were on, on there, I was happy to see uh, Lance, Lance's proposal there from, uh, he's from Mountain View. And, you know, that's just basically what I'm asking is I'm asking for creativity when it comes to league makeup and that it does not have to be tied to your classification and uh, you can you know add the human element uh, to that you can vote regionally I know we're just coming out of uh, a very successful 4a uh, playoff system you know I was one of uh, six other ads that uh, you know was able to put on uh, culminating events um, and we did a great job and it was all pretty much meetings and rankings and things like that. We were able to work together to get that done. So I know, uh, I know it can be done, you know, to, to do that, um, within that proposal. And I know you guys can read it, but it just, you know, it, everybody makes the playoffs, uh, and then you're ranked, uh, regionally, and then you go on from there and, uh, you could be a 4A school or a 3A school with a bunch of schools, not in your league or not in your classification, uh, so you can limit travel, so you can schedule games easier and things like that. But uh, but then you can come out of that and then be placed uh, playoff wise within your classification. Um, you know, if, if you were going to ask me what what classification proposal that I prefer, uh, just looking at 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 Baker and knowing where it's at, and then finding it on that model, I would choose the five A or the five classification model, and that's only because. Uh, of the number of teams in our league. If you look at the six classification model, it pretty much leaves us with four. Uh, Mack High, uh, you know, being on the other side of Pendleton, that's a far trip for Ontario, but four is better than three. Uh, and and the, the difficulty with that, if, if, you, if you're not, you know, if you don't understand what, what makes that difficult is the scheduling come, you know, October for volleyball from middle of September to October for volleyball, for uh, the middle of January uh, through February for, for basketball, for uh, maybe late April and May for baseball and softball. Uh, soccer, it, it, it becomes an issue as well. Um, and that's just because we have difficulty finding games. Uh, Idaho is two weeks ahead of us. So uh, their playoffs start and uh, then we're, you know, struggling to find games, uh, non-league games late in the season. And that's just, be, you know, when you have three, three other teams in your league, you know, that's six league games. And so you're looking to fill quite a few, quite a few spots, um, you know, and this isn't, you know, the six, a if you were to go five, a, um, and that doesn't, that doesn't help everybody. So I know Legrand, which is right down the road, uh, it would be massive amounts of travel for Legrand. And it's silly that Legrand's not in the same league as Baker. I mean, that's a huge impact. You know, I would hope that, if uh, the Legrand AD was was talking with you guys and we were flip flopped that he would say the same thing. And I know he would um, traveling that far uh, just for just for league games and driving by, you know, some other schools that could be in your league just doesn't make a lot of sense. 
So even though the five classification model or the six classification model isn't, does, isn't a fit for everybody, I think it's important to understand that if we do stay six, then our problems stay the same. We have a real difficulty with that. But you look at what happened to Hermiston uh, a few years ago, um, you know, not a lot of creativity went into helping them and then they're gone. And I'm not going to speak for Ontario, but I, I, you know, from my discussions with Josh, uh, Josh Mink out there, you know, I've asked him, you know, what, you know, and he, he said, it's not, you know, it's, it's not in the works right now, but it, it would make more sense for Ontario to be closer to schools uh, that they could play that would be in their league because it's, it lessens travel. So I think if you, uh, is that it? That's your five minute call. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Okay, I was just going to say that I think we're in a position where uh, if we think creatively and outside the box, it would, it could, uh, it could help. So, thanks. Any questions for you? Thank you. You'll thank you to see you, sir. All right, last on the uh, Zoom, who is it? You might have. Well, Josh Crawford from Dayton was on there. We'd say he logged off or maybe something else on the internet. But if he does pop back on, we'll, we'll go ahead and include him. But with that being said, you want to go to public testimony right now? Mr. Yeah. And I, I, right. should we ask if everybody in the room has signed up that, that wants to speak has signed up? If you haven't, they need to sign up with Kyle. Okay. Okay. We're good to go, Kyle. Awesome. So you'll wait for Josh to pop back on momentarily. But if not, we're going to start at the uh, highest classification uh, as aforementioned Lance Haas. Would you come on up? Um, Lance put a public proposal out there for you uh, to review. And again, you'll just mention that moment there a moment ago. Uh, that, that breakfast. So thanks for being here, Lance. You bet. Thank you. Uh, Lance question. is 55. I'm sorry, Coach. Lance is 55 in your pack. Hey, first off, I'd like to say uh, thank you uh, for your time and service. Um, I know this uh, reclassification committee is a tough one. Uh, every four years, it, it seems like it's getting tougher and tougher. And I really do appreciate your time <coughs> letting, me, letting me speak. Um, I think, as we, as we all know, the last year plus, though, has been kind of interesting in high school athletics. COVID brought some very uh, unique challenges that also helped speed along some challenges that were coming down the road. Um, for example, uh, right now our students need to be in the classroom more than ever. Our, if you look at behavior in classrooms, lost class time, years lost due to uh, CDL, it's vitally important that our kids are in the classroom for more seat time. I think if you look at it nationwide, now we have a bus driver shortage. It's not just gonna go away and then next spring it's, or next fall, it's just not all of a sudden gonna make itself better. It is a nationwide shortage that is getting worse by the day. We now have a lack of officiating, and that is going to change and seems to be getting worse and worse. Our numbers were declining. They seem to continue to be declining now at a faster rate. Also, if you look at it, we have a lot of safety issues with travel, and that's been part of the committee's charge now for over eight plus years is trying to make sure that we're safe that way. When I looked at all those things, I think it's time to think out of the box. And um, I've proposed a regional, super regional proposal for you. We've kind of done this already. Last year forced the hands of many areas to schedule regionally because they couldn't travel, travel limits and everything in that regards. I think it's now it's time to take a look at fully impl implementing this. So if you look at my proposal, I kind of combined draft number four and I created, I created um, seven large regions that way. I think the idea and the key thing to this is it's flexibility. We don't know how many officials we're gonna have. We don't know how many bus drivers we're gonna have. We don't know what the smoke's gonna be like. We don't know in general what tomorrow brings in the high school athletic world anymore. Every day is a challenge. We have to be flexible. I think by having these large regions, it creates the flexibility to schedule and give the regions a chance to schedule for themselves because they know what's best in their areas. For example, larger regions, we can split into divisions. If you look at some of your former drafts that you've had, I know that looking at Mountain View's area, the one that has with Eugene and Southern schools, that's an idea, a splitting into divisions. So this allows for splits into divisions if the region wanted to. 
It allows for division championships. The region can decide what they want to do. Maybe it's a city championship. You can have those contests. It's gonna increase the excitement again in high school sports. It's also going to give us a chance for the ADs that know their programs to schedule competitive matchups. I know for a fact that my softball team is, is not super strong, but now in my region, it gives me a chance to schedule those games where, my, where we can be competitive. It also just finally gives control for us to figure out our own problems. Central Oregon problems are different than Portland problems. They're different than Southern Oregon problems. Some of them are the same but it gives us a chance and a way to, to try to solve them. If you look at your criteria, I think it solves almost every one of them. Most, all, all schools are all in regular district history. We get a chance for competitive balance. We have similar size leagues that are large. The instructional time due to the fact that it's region is going, is going to be greatly reduced. So we're gonna be in, in the classroom longer periods of time. It's going to also minimize expenditures. Didn't move as many schools as before. And we're not traveling. We don't have scheduling problems. And I even added in there the lack of officials. Local matchups means more chances for our local officials to schedule our games, whether than a local game or an out of state game. The beauty of this, though, in my eyes, is still that we still get to go to state championships. You can still have all league teams, you can still have postseason games. Just like what Buell said, everybody can make the playoffs that way. So you're not being penalized by being in just your region. I think that if we use that, we can use the power rankings. It's also going to increase local gates and revenue because we're going to have local, more local games. It's also going to increase revenue for the OSAA by having more first round games. Kind of in conclusion, Ben. Mountain View and Summit so far this year have had to self-transport 11 times this fall. And when I mean by self-transport, not to Ridgeview and Redmond, I'm talking about moving groups across the mountain. I will be self-transporting my football team on week eight to McNary already on a Saturday. Okay. We've already moved a lot to Saturdays. Now what's happened is we still don't have enough officials because they're wearing out. And we don't have enough buses because we already are having super Saturdays where we're having multiple groups in multiple sports already travel there. This isn't sustainable. Okay. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to say thanks for your time. I think it's time to think outside of the box and give us a chance as ADs to do what's right for our regions. And thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Lance. Does anyone have questions for Lance? Uh, the question. Mm -hmm. So this is a 5A, 4A combined. Did you look at the other classifications or have any? When I, when I kind of looked at it, I looked at the 5 and the 4, and it seemed to me that the 3, 2, and 1 were pretty regionalized. But obviously, that could be up for discussion. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's been your conversations, Lance, with other athletic directors and school people regarding this type of approach. Like you mentioned, we saw a lot of that last year. What's been the conversation that you Conversations had? I've had is people think that it's intriguing and that it's doable because we showed that we could do it last year. Now we're just adding like the playoff piece, you know, other than just getting games. This allows us to fill schedules and still have state championships. What are you hearing from people who don't like it or where are the, where are the issues and flaws? That, I mean, like the, 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 when the first people that I've talked to have seen this, again, intrigued by it, Mm -hmm. their first thought goes, okay, well, then what do the playoffs look like? And we get that a lot as mm -hmm. part of this committee as well, but what does that look like? Or how do those things, what, what are you hearing, if anything, on potential concerns? Or uh, I think some concerns that I hear every now and then is like, well, what are the rules? You know, like what, what would the region rules be? But I think looking at that, you go back to it, isn't that what athletic directors are for? We're the ones that know our own regions. So maybe, uh, you know, we're filling schedules, and, and we're the ones in the regions that are making rules. So maybe one region does have like a, a, a district championship. Maybe one doesn't, but it, it, it still allows everybody still to make the playoffs and allows them to schedule their games. So I think that's the, the big thing is, is that it's not a traditional approach. And that's the hardest thing to kind of wrap your head around. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. So four years ago, there was a, a question that was asked by Mr. Shelley back there quite a few times, which was, 
you were saying on Saturdays it wasn't sustainable. So mm-hmm. what is it about Saturday that makes it difficult? You know, we, we hear from Buell, we hear and think outside the box. Why can't we have more contests, especially with official shortages, busing, transportation issues? Why can't we have more contests on a Saturday? What we're finding is, is that we've moved a lot to Saturdays to be accommodating, but now our officials are working six days a week. And so, for example, our soccer officials these last two weeks, I'm now stacking games at 3 and 4.30 because they're burning out. And so by moving even games to Saturdays, they're still having to work that long. And busing and transportation, our transportation department very early on said there'll be no yellow buses during the week for you guys. So Ben Lapine's gone strictly to charters. We have charter groups that are dropping on a Wednesday, self-transport. The other part is we moved to Saturdays. Now we have so many buses out. We have, again, we have a lack of drivers. Not every bus driver wants to work on a Saturday. So here we are again, transporting, you know, I'm going to transport 70 plus families across the mountain to McNary in week seven. It's just, I mean, it, it, after a while, it's, I think everybody just kind of wears out. No, I get that. I'm just saying that instead of having, you know, to, to compete with your route buses, you have, let's say two buses for, I mean, for a, a football team, you may have two buses go. Mm-hmm. That, that's I think more feasible that I, it doesn't take every driver in order to have, you know, a Saturday contest. It would take, you know, six drivers for the whole weekend, which I would think you so, know, your district probably has. So, I wasn't sure. so that Saturday when we're at McNary, my freshman football team will be playing on that Saturday. My boys soccer team will be playing at McKay and my girls volleyball team will be playing there. And that's just, that's just Mountain View. That's not talking about Bend mm-hmm. uh, or Summit and it's soon to be Caldera. And so there won't, there won't be enough drivers. Not everybody wants to work that set. That many yeah, we get that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much. Yep. You bet. Have thank, a good day. Thank, you. thank you for your time. <clears throat> Next up, Patrick Brown, JV from the Fort Hitch School of Eugene. Uh, nothing to look at your correspondence. What's that? Uh, I don't know if Patrick correspond. can send me anything. Nope. No reference correspondence. No, I'm just up here to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to have this on or can I? Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Patrick Brown. I'm the new AD for Eugene uh, 4J uh, Public Schools. I appreciate you <coughs> allowing me to talk. I just moved up here a couple months ago, and my experience with the OSAA has been amazing so far. I didn't even know what AQI meant. Thought my ADs were jacking with me and said, "Hey, you got to watch this thing. We may have to cancel the game." And I said, "Ha ha! What are you? What are you talking about? What is AQI? What does that even mean?" Well, I got a, a quick schooling on that, and the OSA was really amazing, getting back to me uh, immediately, email wise and callback wise. So I, you guys really do a great job, and I'm coming from a state where we have almost 1,300 high schools and trying to get an answer from your state uh, organization in timely fashion is almost impossible. So I really appreciate how hard you guys work. And I know no matter what decision you make, half the people here are going to be mad, half are going to be happy. So from for our uh, situation in Eugene, obviously very much like the, the Mountain View AD, our, traveling is huge for us. I mean, are, are some of our programs travel the exact same amount as some of the West Texas schools do? And traveling three or four hours on a school night, <clears throat> and I asked one of my ADs, who a former baseball coach, I said, how come you're not coaching baseball anymore? He said, well, we drive three or four hours to play a baseball game. We get run rule. The game lasts maybe an hour, and now we're on a bus back to Eugene for three or four hours. Because our, I don't know if it's like this in other districts, our ter- uh, coaching turnover is extraordinary. I mean, we're, we're talking in upwards of, of 40 or 45 percent, and I'm used to 5 percent or less. And, and a lot of that stuff, when I talk to these coaches that are leaving, is travel. It's travel, and it's also these walk-on coaches that have to take days off from work um, because they have to travel so far in such uh, <clears throat> great distances um, to, to get to these games. Uh, we're, we're losing student-athletes. As well, if you look at our numbers, um, not just from COVID, but participation wise, a a lot of kids don't want to be on a bus for four hours to go play a basketball game on a Tuesday night and then get back at one um, because it's just hard. It's hard on them to get up and and have to worry about school and all the other uh, commitments they have. So that's another huge deal for us. Uh, Budget wise, we're spending in excess of 60 or 70 percent of our budget on transportation. So that's all money that doesn't go to buying a catcher's mitt, 
helmets, whatever. And it's, 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 uh, it's an extraordinary amount of money to spend when, when, when I talk to my ADs, we have within an hour of our town, so many schools that we could play and match up against where it wouldn't be such <clears throat> an incredible taxing uh, situation where you're driving three or four hours. Um, like everybody else, we're struggling with bus drivers. And so what we've done there is I, I took something that we did uh, in my last day and we're training our coaches to drive and we're gonna pay them the same as our bus drivers, but that's a slow process. Um, and, and so that's where we're at right now. We're so desperate that, that we're having our, our coaches drive vans and, and some of our coaches get CDL so they can actually drive uh, yellow buses. For us, I know that the 5A model makes a lot more sense than the 6A model. I know everybody wants there to be, a, you know, a competitive balance, but more importantly than competitive balance is the safety of our student athletes and coaches. And, and not just them, but their parents who, you know, work all day and drive three hours to watch them play a softball game and then have to drive back that night and get up in the morning and go to work. So to me, the safety issue absolutely takes precedent over any type of com competitive, uh, you know, equalization like that. And last thing I'll say before I get off my soapbox is, in, in my opinion, we should have two-year blocks because this is such a tough decision for you guys to lock that decision in for four years. That's why everybody here is, you know, very concerned about what the decision is going to be. But if you lock it in, like I know most states do it as, as a two-year uh, situation, then you could take some more chances and think outside the box, which I heard some people say, um, where you could come back in two years and, and adjust it a little bit, as opposed to the four-year uh, situation where we know schools can gain a tremendous number of kids or lose kids. And there again, if you're talking about competitive equity, could be an issue. Um, with that being said, I, I know you guys have a hard job. I, I can't, I'm so happy I'm not in your position that I can just come over here and whine and complain and uh, whatever you guys decide, we'll make the best. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Questions for Patrick? So, Pat, uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the, the comments. I, I guess I'm, so am I hearing a preference? Yes, we, we definitely, I mean, both of those things are, are, are not fantastic for us, but the 5A model is what all four of my ADs prefer the five classification uh, situation and just kind of like the Mountain View guy, our, our, our coaches would rather play local and have some sort of, I don't know, two league system. And I, I can't speak for Portland schools or Eastern or Southern Oregon. I just know what, what our school district needs. And so, yeah, the, the 5A model would definitely be something that we would prefer over the 6A model. Do you think that Patrick, you think, I'm Russ. I mean, yes. we'll be seeing each other on Wednesday too. So um, have you guys talked about the regional type of concept? We, we have, a, and, and, you know, I know there's a million ideas and I'm not comfortable enough saying that this is how we should do it because it's, I, I think like coach said, that's what ADs are for. We should right. sit down and figure out how to do that. And I think it's a great decision to take football outside because that's a one time a week thing. And that's, I don't think that's an issue, but the two or three times a week that that's an issue. Thank Great. you. Nice Appreciate to meet you, Patrick. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you guys. Next, I'd like to welcome uh, Mike Samuels, AD of Pendleton. Nothing to report from. I have a third evidence here from the Dallas. Oh, yeah. Please, please, absolutely. <clears throat> Mike, I don't think I have correspondence from either one of you. Okay, no, just no, I just wrote in that we were going to come in today. So, uh, thanks for thanks for giving us a few minutes here. Um, and thank you all for the job that you've really <clears throat> served on a couple of these committees before, and I know the decisions you guys have to make behind the scenes. So that being said, uh, I'm we're here on behalf of the IMC, the 5A Air Mountain Conference. So Redmond, Ridgeview, Crick County, the Dallas, Pendleton, and to an extent uh, Hood River. Um, and so we've just got a few things that we want to we want to point out. We're going to make it very clear we're a big fan of the five classification system from what we saw. Um, and a lot of that has to do with competitive balance. Um, in that system, we have a few more schools in the 4A ranks. Uh, the numbers are definitely more feasible for the size of schools that we are. Um, if you look at the IMC right now, we have three of the, what, six or seven smallest 5A schools in that league. And so it's been a very good league for us, you know, for the last four years, kind of an extension of the old CRC 
a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to mention something that may seem a little controversial, but it's, you know, in, in our area, it's a little different. We're prioritizing competitive balance in our league over travel. And I say that coming from Pendleton because everywhere we go, we have to travel, right? right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, on, in our league, we try to, we play Tuesday and Friday nights. We play Tuesday and Thursdays for soccer. We do travel. Uh, when our kids go to Ridgeview for a soccer game on a Thursday night, they're getting home at one in the morning. During basketball, they're getting home at 2.30 in the morning and our kids go to school the next day. We don't give them periods off and the kids have done a good job with that over the years. They've kind of gotten used to it. But having teams like the Dallas and Hood River down the river allow us to have opportunities for our kids to get home a little bit earlier, maybe before midnight, you know, that type of thing. But it's been a very competitive league in the league that we're in and, and we're all uh, in agreement with that. Um, the one thing that we're really worried about is a regional schedule. Our whole league is not in favor of that right now for multiple reasons. Number one, the regional schedule will create a disparity in competitive balance. Um, the schools that could be entering a regional situation um, are a lot bigger than us, a lot bigger than us. Uh, in fact, there's a couple of schools in that regional model that are about three times the size of some of the smaller schools in that regional model. So we wanna be real careful with that, that we're not putting ourselves in a position where, um, you know, that could be a detriment to athletic programs across the board. The other thing I worry about from a Pendleton perspective, and I'll be very open about this, I'm worried about a regional model because we're stuck between, you know, an area with a lot of small schools. You know, we play LeGrand in most everything. <clears throat> we play Baker in a lot of things. But other than that, there's really nobody else in Eastern Oregon that we can play on a consistent basis based on the size of the schools. So if you send us, as an instance, into a region that has Central Oregon schools, there's a good chance certain schools will not come to Pendleton and will not come play us. And we do not want to be in a position where we're trying to, you know, help other schools out and be a part of a region that maybe is not, you know, fully bought into traveling to the entire group. So, um, sorry, I've never actually spoken about these things before. I know this <laughs> <laughs> um, But the biggest thing, you know, I, I, and we talked as ADs over our last three meetings, we really want to try to keep our league together as much as possible. Now, we do understand the 5A model Hood River moves to the NWOC from what we've seen. And we're very supportive of that. We understand where Hood River is coming from. And we understand that that's a good position for them. Um, you know, we're not exactly sure where LeGrand and Madras are. We get that. But from the, from the looks of it, we're a big fan of, of what that uh, allows for our region. Obviously, having a team like LeGrand 45 minutes away is a neighbor to us. Right now, our neighbor's at Dallas, <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes away. Um, and so we have schools, again, that are, you know, again, connected, similar size, and, and definitely competitively more balanced um, than other, other scenarios that we could be put in. So I think that's all you got anything or? Well, you did such a great job. I don't want to ruin <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> but I would just say in this approach, you know, we, we made sure that we met as a, as a, a, a we have been meeting as a league through this process to kind of come with a, with a, a league uh, voice. Uh, like Mike said, we're full, we're very supportive of the five classification system, but more importantly, retaining the current IMC. We feel that strikes a good balance between, you know, the competitive balance and the regional travel. You know, you could throw either one out and then we'd all be playing you know, 1A would be playing 5A, you just through travel out. So anyway, so we're supportive of that. We've, we've been in communication with some of the other, you know, address and some of the other schools around within like our geographical league um, to get their input as well. But um, just uh, again, we're sitting here kind of not so much as Pendleton and the Dow speaking, but also, but kind of as an I, as a, as a current IMC uh, expressing our desire to uh, <clears throat> stay as an IMC and supportive of the, of the proposal. I think it's proposal number four, the five class proposal that retains that model. So. And last but not least, even though we're prioritizing competitive balance in the league we're in, um, the fact is, you know, for a league game on Tuesday night, we're going over four hours to another school. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same point, Kirk County, Redmond, Ridgeview do the same thing to us. And it's reciprocal. And again, I, I value those relationships that they want to be part of this still going forward. Um, you know, the non-league pieces we fill with Eastern Oregon, right? Walla Walla, Baker City, you know, who we can. Same with them. Those guys can fill with the Bend schools, you know, um, Lapine, some of those other schools. And we fill with the West schools, yeah. Hood River, Portland. So, again, that's where we worry about the regional piece if we could be completely high and dry, um, as opposed to being in a league where you can fill non-league within your region. So. Questions for Mike or Kurt? <clears throat> 
So we kind of hit that one out of the park. Yeah, there, good so job. Yeah. Great job. Okay. <laughs> Take your show on the road now. You're ready. Yeah. Uh, next up, Trent Kroll, 80 of the River. And his correspondence number is number 6060. Bank. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> Again, I'm here speaking specifically for Hood River Valley. The Intermountain Conference knows um, our well, that we would prefer to be in a Portland group. Um, we, the NWOC, we in Hood River consider ourselves a, a suburb of Portland. It takes as long to get from LaSalle and Putnam to Hood River as it does sometimes to get from Wilsonville to, to Sunset. And uh, we, you know, we're, we're in the same boat as everybody else with self-transportation right now. Um, and currently in a league that has four of our six schools three hours away. We're a small 5A school. I spoke to that last time, last meeting, where our district has 45% free and reduced, but our, our ADM only showed 37%. Um, due to the high school kids not applying for free and reduced. So we're a small 5A school at 883. <clears throat> we, our number one goal is competitive balance. So putting us in the Mount Hood Conference with the 6A schools um, is not our, not our first choice. We'd rather be with the, the NWOC. And number two is being closer transportation. In uh, Lance's proposal of a regional model, that would have us moving from his region three to region one. Otherwise, we re really like where we've been put in draft number four with 4A-1, that region. And I just thank you again for the opportunity to be here and thanks for your time on this committee. Thanks, Trent. Anyone have questions for Trent? So in that in that regional plan, you would want to be in region one. Is that we, we would like to be sure? with the NWOC PIL, yes. All right. Thanks, Trent. Have Thank a good you. day. Next up, we're moving to four right now. I will go to Tony Mata from Toloma. Number 25 in your package. Number 25. As well as the proposal posted online. Uh, first, I wanted to <clears throat> thank you guys for your time uh, on this committee. It's, uh, I think someone said it earlier when it's, you know, you're going to make some people, half the people happy and half of them upset, just like call fouls at a basketball game, right? <laughs> One crowd, half the crowd's happy, half's upset at the call. Um, really what my biggest concern is um, the number of schools per classification. And I, I think there's, it, there's absolutely almost no reason why we, that can't be a consistent, at least 40 schools per classification it makes it much easier to schedule schools within your classification. Um, you know, so as I look at like draft four, I, I think that's one of the better drafts I've seen, um, you know, and, and when the first two drafts came out, I started a draft. I took it to the to my first AD league meeting. I made adjustments to it based on input from those guys. Uh, created another draft, and then uh, saw your drafts three and four, and then adjusted my drafts again based on who might play up and um, you know who would opt to play up and some of those sort of things. And I have concerns about teams opting to play up when they don't offer sports across the board, major sports, you know. So. You know, we either there are 10 schools, for example, that in my draft would choose, would probably choose to play up and, and um, thus making that 4A classification under 40. You know, the reality is you can't stop somebody from playing up. There's no criteria to play up. And, um, and that just makes it tougher on those on that way in a, in a five class system that that 4A group as schools decide to play up. Um, I think it can be done. I, I like, I mean, if I had to say one that I like, you know, almost as well as mine is, is draft number four, that five classification polls. I don't think the state can, can operate with six class. I don't think there are enough schools to put uh, 40 or so schools in each classification level. Um, I understand the travel piece. Um, 
you know, I, fortunately, both the both the schools I've been in AD at are in the Valley. So we travel when we want to, which for me is a commitment at least every season to, to try to get to whether it's someplace down south to play because I recognize they need games. One of my responsibilities for AAD is to see who else I can help. And I think we all have that obligation. Um, the reality is there's going to be some geographical isolated people who live, play in small conferences, right? And, and that's when they get the opportunity to, when it's appropriate competitively wise, to play that smaller school or play that school that's a little bigger. You know, um, I hear people talking about what we did last year. And I know that, um, you know, I had, because you didn't have to play people last year. I had uh, several football teams um, that just would not play us because we were a bigger school, even though we only had 24 kids on the team, right? We, we had whatever, 300 kids in the, 350 kids in the school. So we were too big. Um, and I think you're going to run into that. As I looked at some of those, I go, well, if I, if I live in LeGrand, do I want to play summit in that super regional or whatever you want to call it? You know, would I have to, do I get to pick who I want to play on that? And then, what if I'm the team nobody wants to play? Mm -hmm. And I've been there a couple times too. So, um, and I know it's not an easy job, but I, I think um, I think classifications, the sizes of each one of those should should be in the 40s, and that would help with competitive balance. That would help with scheduling. And then we as ADs need to recognize we have an obligation to help those geographically isolated schools within our classification. And if we all take on one of those games, mm -hmm. they're spread out, and you don't end up with a bunch of travel for just one school. Okay, questions for Tony? Thanks for all your work on that, Tony. You're welcome. Good luck. <laughs> Tony, did your last, sorry, did your last iteration, you said, did you look at the cutoff numbers from number four? Yeah, I start, I used that a little bit. I, yeah. I think, but for me, I think a thousand is that cutoff at, at the five class at five A and above, mm -hmm. um, and part of that is my bias a little bit. Spending more than twenty years of my career at South Albany, and looking at that, going, I, I did the old Valley League, you know, when it was when we went to, you know, what McNary or, or Sprague at the time, knowing we weren't going to compete. And so, yeah, I looked at that and go, okay, where, where's the competitive balance there? And, and so, I might have, in my own bias, put put that at a thousand, so I knew I was. Helping my old school by putting them on a classification. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, Lonnie Eggers, CD of Tillman. Nothing in your correspondence today. You guys would invite me if I would have responded. Lonnie Eggers, Tillman, on behalf of Tillman here. Uh, a couple of our concerns is I, I hear a lot of people saying they wouldn't want to be in your position. And to be honest, I'd lo love to be in your position. I think your position is going to be a lot easier than mine if you guys make a decision that's going to hurt some of our student athletes. Because uh, at the end of the day, I still got to hire coaches, get kids on the buses, find buses, find officials. So mechanically, that's hard for me, um, especially as we've moved into COVID. So making that decision would be easy compared to what I'm going to have to do here in the next few months, year, whatever that looks like. Um, some of the concerns we have at Tillamook, financially, it's going to be struck. We'll struggle with this. Right now, we don't have... Um, we're pulling officials out of Portland. We used to have officials that came out of the North Coast. That was easy for us. Um, when they made that decision, um, it, it became more expensive for us. The other thing is it's hard for us to find officials. I know what the, the 5A, um, everybody says, well, there's larger leagues. Well, that's great having a larger league, but the problem is we can't find busing um, and we can't find officials at this time. We're barely operating on the, on the league that we have now. And so that's difficult as we make that decision moving forward. Uh, another thing is, I know one of your things is to uh, minimize loss of student instruction time. Us being out of school, traveling over to Platinum Park Rose, uh, off to Hood River, is not convenient. Um, like I said, I think our average age for our bus driving was 70. So at some point, we're going to see a, a fall off there with what we have now. Um, luckily, our superintendent has, has made some, some deals to keep them on through COVID. So it's been difficult. Another thing is the competitive balance. We talk about competitive balance. Um, right now, it's 6A, the way it is now, it's not broken. It's not broken for us. It's competitively balanced for us, uh, especially being on the coast. Uh, next concern is our safety. As many as you know, you have to travel Highway 6. That is not safe. That's not safe during the winter, not safe during the summer. Uh, just in the past few months, we've had five, six, five, six fatalities just there. You know, to ask visitors to come over that road, ask us to go that way. 
I mean, that's concerning for us. Safety is our priority. Okay. Um, participation. COVID hit us pretty hard. We've had, we've fallen off a little bit with participation. Um, along with participation, we're losing coaches. With the current 5A, we're going to pull coaches even more. Not all of ours are on staff. They financially take a hit. They're private business owners, things like that, where they've already struggled. I know he talked, uh, Lance talked about providing busing with coaches. I did that as a wrestling coach. I drove buses for 20 some years. It's not safe. And wrestling's all day. You know, it's an all day. It's a grind. We get up early to weigh-ins. Um, I did it. I loved it, but I don't think it's for everybody. So it's going to be, it's going to be taxed on me. I think right now we're going to lose coaches. I know we talk about participation in the numbers. Some kids just aren't going to come out. And I get that. But the problem is for Telemuk, I think we're going to lose coaches. And when we lose coaches, we're going to lose entire programs. Even now we're having trouble. We can't find freshman coaches. Um, the other thing is I, I want to make sure that we're getting good coaches, good community leaders. Uh, people are going to make very, better characters, give us better characteristics in our student athletes. So, um, and we all know that extracurricular increases attendance. So we'd like to keep our numbers up, keep kids going, offer great coaches so kids want to come out for those. So those are my concerns. I appreciate you guys having me. First time I've ever been part of one of these. I'm sure my name's come up before, though. So. Thanks, Lonnie. Yeah, thank you, guys. Anybody have questions for Lonnie? So in, in the last two proposals, then you would support staying in sixth class with your somewhat traditional Coapa League school. Correct. The Coapa League, that tradition is just, it's, it's convenient for us transportation-wise. I and mean, there's a lot of tradition there for us to be competitive. And um, we fit well there. We have an alternative school. We don't get a lot from our alternative school for athletics. Um, our virtual kids, we don't get a lot from. Usually the kids that are there, the ones we draw from, and that number looks different than the one you have. So we're just a good fit for the Coapa League with transportation. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next up, Greg Mulkey, Katie of Marshfield. Nothing here corresponds to this one. I say it's something, but I probably say it too late. Uh, <clears throat> you can get it later. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, I, I have to tell you that, uh, or the opportunity to speak, uh, this will be. Uh, Every time since 2006, I think the 6A classification started in 2006. Am I right? I think I am. Okay. And I've been here every time. And I'm going to give you the same message that I have every year or every four years. I will promise you this. The next four years, I'll be fishing. Okay. I'm getting to that age. So, uh, I'll write that down. All right. Then, uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you. I The first thing. I want to ask, you know, I know you're not going to make a decision, but you're going to make a recommendation. And I'm a 6A classification person. I have been since the beginning, and I know I will always be that. And hopefully I can express that today in my presentation. Because I want to ask you, what really is broke with the 6A classification? In my opinion, not, there, it isn't broke. Can it be tweaked? Absolutely. Um, I think, and I've heard, and I hope it, that this is, isn't happening, but I've heard that uh, the larger schools want larger, bigger leagues. They want more people. Well, the first thing I would ask you, why is it okay in the five classification that the five classification has 62 and 65 schools in their classification? And others have less than 40. That's not balanced. Really fair, probably that that's allowed, and, and, and I don't know if it's because just because they want bigger leagues because it's easier to schedule. I would argue that I think it's easier to schedule with smaller leagues because of the flexibility that schools can have uh, to be able to choose and not be forced to go or travel in a large league. Is it money? Well, I can tell you in both 5A classifications models. It increases Marshfield High School 27% transportation. Because it's created a larger league and it's forcing schools, and I think you're gonna hear that from my colleague, that it forces schools to um, travel to distances that maybe they don't want to because they don't have that flexibility. Is it eliminating the state championship? Does that say money? I don't know. I hope that is not a discussion because we should have every state championship we possibly can have. 
That should be our goal in this job. It should be our goal as the OSA A to provide that for our students. There are three really crucial points that I want to point out. These are the three that I've been consistent since 2006. Competitive balance is important. That's extremely important. And by moving from five classification, excuse me, six to a five, now we've just created that imbalance. We now have put a, a larger gap between lower schools and higher schools because you eliminated the classification. So I think that's really important. I think it allows you just taking away schools opportunities to get into the playoffs. And the next point is that creates school culture. I can tell you from experience, if my, and I think we all can <clears throat> agree, how important is athletics to our school culture? It's extremely important. And by creating and putting schools where now they have a harder time getting to those playoffs, it's gonna hurt those, the school culture. I think the biggest thing to me going from six to five is it destroys the 2A, 3A, 4A, and 5A classification. <clears throat> it dismantles the 4A because we have teams going here and teams going here. And I'm passionate when I say this. We as a 4A classification, I'm, I'm talking about it. I'm passionate that we are a, a group that's united. We proved it last year that we united together and had state championships. Sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. But we had state championships, in my opinion, for every individual and in team sport. Why would we want to take that apart? I don't, I, and it, it takes away every, those four classifications in the middle. So I think this is worth saying, too. I think we're going to stay at six classifications for football. Why is it okay that volleyball has to be 5A? Why is it okay that basketball is 5A? I think that it's important that every team sport is in the same classification. <clears throat> so in closing, I just want to ask again, really think about, is the sixth classification broke? In my opinion, it's not. I think that, um, can it be tweaked? Absolutely. And in my sixth classification proposal, I tweaked the numbers. I put, Schools that really should drop down, drop down. And put schools who I thought should go up, go up. But it definitely has competitive balance. It's going to allow schools to continue and hopefully get into the playoffs. And it doesn't destroy four of the middle classifications that we currently, currently have. So obviously, I'm, I highly recommend that we continue with sixth classification because, in my opinion, it's the right thing to do for the state of Oregon. You want me to start from the bottom? Here's the thing you can't, the bottom and the top, you can't work with because they're there no matter what. I mean, 1A is 1A, 6A is 6A. So my number for 2A is 175 to 147. My number for 3A is 148 to 309. My number for 4A is 310 to 580. My number for 5A is 580 to 1054. And my number for the six classifications, 1055 and up. Six classification, 52 schools. The 5A classification, 33 schools. The 4A classification, 34 schools. The 3A classification, 42 schools. And the 2A classification, 37 schools. What was the 2A number again? 2A is uh, 175 to 47. 75 to 147. Those are my numbers. I think if you have a chance to look at it, um, I think the competitive balance just hits you in the face uh, when you look at it. Any more questions? Do you have it, Brad? No. Can you email that in? Or? Sure. I thought I emailed it to you. I don't have it. No, I don't.
Yeah. Can we just screenshot? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, I got it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, Thank if you, you had a chance to look at like the regional concept, like that Lance or others or Buell or others have talked about. Is Lance still here? <laughs> so don't get mad at me. But, <laughs> I, here's my concern about regional concept. You look at a school like us, what, what bothers me, what are the rules for it? If you put us in a region, does that region expect that they have to schedule with you? I would hope so, because we're in a region where we're located. There's no way we could be in a region on the South Coast. We're not going to play Powers and Myrtle Point and Coquille. So we'd have to be in a region with Southern Oregon or Eugene? Well, would Eugene come play us? Will Southern Oregon come play us? So I'm real concerned about the rules and the expectations of a regional concept. Um, I think there's a lot of work to do with the regional concept. I think that when you have, I already mentioned, if you have smaller leagues, you can, you, we're, we're doing that anyway. With the league of six, we are working regionally. Because I schedule our league and then I go south and pick up games. I go other places regionally and pick up those. So I'm not a regional supporter. I think there's too much, there's too much to do, a lot of work to do. And I just think it uh, has a lot of questions. Don't be mad at me, Lance. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Wait a minute, Darren, anybody else want to make up and list it all on screen? Also, anybody else? All right, Darren Syrock. Uh, thank you for your His number was actually no number, but it's posted on the website under the article. information at the bottom under October 11th meeting information. Uh, more about mileage, correct, Darren? Is that correct? Yeah. Cool. We can reference that and go first. Thank you, Darren. So I, I hope, and this is a lot of work for our office staff and, and myself. I would hope you have this information, but I suspect you don't based on- We have it. We have it. I know that I gave it to you, but before I did it, I would hope you'd had it, right? So I basically had them do the mileage for each league. That shouldn't come from us. That's something you guys should have already. So I just, I'm, that's something that I hope you consider as you go, because there's a lot of misinformation. Mis so I heard somebody say, um, Coach said earlier, you're going to tick off 50% of the people. I would say it's going to be 60% based on this. So I didn't include, when I did the math, didn't include the PIL because they don't change travel wise. I didn't include 1A or 2A because their, their numbers don't affect whether it's six classes or five classes. But in the five, the recent five classification thing you did, 60 travel less miles if you go five classes and 89 travel more miles in five classes. So if you choose your recent five classification versus six classification, 60% of the teams travel more on average in that classification. If you look at leagues, there's 16 total, six leagues benefit, they travel less, and 10 leagues travel more. So again, in that 60%, if you're, so you're just talking travel. So I looked at those numbers. I'm like, man, that's a lot. And then I thought to myself, what's a, what's a big trip, right? I know last time we heard different 80s talking about the unbelievable long trip from Kaiser to Forest Grove. And that's not a long trip for most people. So I took the number 100 miles. 100 miles is a long trip. If you're talking about a school, that's a good, that's a good two hour plus trip for a school. If you do that in the five classification model that you put out, 34 schools on average have over 100 miles in the five classification proposal. If you take the six classification proposal, only 25 schools have that 100 mile trip on average. <laughs> so just based on what you guys put out, and again, I appreciate that work, it's a ton of work, Schools have to travel less on average if you go six classes versus if you go five classes. And part of that is because you mandate who they play. And there's been a lot of talk of regional. If you mandate who they play, they have to make those trips. If you don't, 
they can travel, they can schedule people closer, they can travel farther, whatever they want to do. So check my math. I had to check our office staff math because it's a lot of work, had some kids doing it. Um, but it's a, I was surprised actually that it came out that way. That in the five classes, people on average have to travel more than in the six classification proposal. Do you have an average of how much more, Darren? I don't. Um, so like, is it five miles? Is it 75? Some of them, so if you look at it, some are really small. So you look at like, they travel 0.4 less or right. five more. That's why I looked at that 100 mile radius because I thought that was, that's a big trip. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I know for Nestucca, that's just the average, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, 100 miles is a long trip, and it's also relative, right? Years mm -hmm. ago, Hermiston came to our place, and I was coaching at Silverton, and I said, "Long trip for you guys?" I said, "Oh no, it's one of our shorter trips." Yep. I'm like, "That would seem like a long trip for mm -hmm. me." So I know it's relative. So yeah. that's why I took the, took the number 100 because that is a long trip. 40 on average doesn't seem like a very long trip, mm -hmm. but I know for some people that seems like a lot if you're used to traveling five, right? And you have to travel on average 40. That seems like a lot. Both all relative. But I didn't do the math as far the as averages. what okay. the average is. Yeah. Other questions for Darren? Darren, you mentioned the fact about if, if you go to a five-class system and you set up leagues where you're mandated to play because they're in your league, um, obviously those trips take place because you're mandated not travel. Right. When we hear from some schools about the desire to have – more teams in a classification or more teams in a league. Certainly anytime if you take uh, whatever league it is, the Metro League at the 6A, the way it's currently constructed, as soon as you add one more team to it, you're increasing travel. Not necessarily, so, it shouldn't by average, right? Only if that, I mean, it, in total miles for sure, but it ne shouldn't necessarily be more miles on average if you added a team. It just depends on how far. So if they're if I travel to this many schools and then I add a school that's within closer than those, then that average is going to drop. If I average, if I add a school that's farther away, then the average is going to go up. Right. But if you had a school that was closer than that, wouldn't they already be in that league? Potentially. But yeah. we hear people talk about, I'm in a league where I have to drive past somebody to go there and that sort of thing. Okay. So I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying it just depends on where that team, yeah. that school is at. Yeah. Okay. You've identified the challenge. Agreed. And the other thing I would say is, and I didn't write this down, but if we're all being honest, if, if competitive balance was the only thing that we were addressing, it would be six classes. I mean, there, if you're looking at the, 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 brand, the spectrum of the schools, there would be a few schools that would benefit. But if competitive balance was the only thing, I don't see how anybody could come to the five classes proposal if you're talking majority of schools. Anything else for Darren? Thanks for all your Thanks, work Darren. on that too. Appreciate yeah, it. I appreciate it. I didn't do it by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I finally got a tour you month. Yeah. Yeah. Number 5858 in the package. Oh, Gordon. All right, uh, thanks for letting me, give me an opportunity to talk. It's great to see Tillamook County represented here so well with uh, Misty and Lonnie and Kurt or somewhere around here. Um, I don't have any magical proposals for you that solve all the problems. I don't have any uh, platinum cutoff numbers that solve it for everybody as well. Um, I do support the, the last three people with uh, six classifications in the county uh, for that uh, traditional leads. Um, you know, it, it's not broke right now, we don't believe. So like, uh, like Greg said, some minor tweaking here and there. Um, and as uh, many people said, COVID has created a, uh, some interesting times over the last year and a half, two years. Um, and what I've noticed though, is, uh, you know, I've been, I see two lessons every day um, through this that, uh, you know, my students have, bestowed upon me and uh, everywhere and other places as well, but uh, being flexible and extending grace. Um, and where we're in a unique situation at Nia Kani is 5A proposal, 6A proposal, we are right at that cutoff point that, that shoves us to a 3A. Um, and 
I don't believe there's anyone out there that says Neocani should be a 3A. Uh, it, it is not what is right for us. The, the 5A, I've, I've had a hard time even thinking about the five classification proposal because that would be instant death for Neocani athletics. And I'm, I, and I'm not um, trying to exaggerate that at all. If you look at where we're at in the 5A proposal, uh, Seaside Astoria, uh, Valley Catholic, it, 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 it's not good. We would lose coaches. We will lose athletes. They will go to Tillamook or somewhere. Um, it would not be good. 6A, um, it's still not good for us. Where I mean, in, in the 3A classification. So what, I, what I'm hoping can come out of this is wherever the numbers lie, wherever the cutoff numbers are put at, um, I'm hoping there can be some sort of appeal process for schools like ourselves that you can look at the data, look beyond the numbers. Um, I know we have full support from the Northwest League. They want us to stay. I've talked with uh, Ian O'Brien at Warrington, and it, it doesn't seem like the three eight people really want us there because <laughs> it's just not good. Um, and, and something beyond the petition to play down. Uh, right now, we have over the last four years, we, our winning percentage is uh, for team sports forty four percent. And obviously, that doesn't that doesn't meet the criteria to play down. But I'm not requesting to play down from two A to one A. I, I just want to stay at two way where where we belong, um, even though our numbers are slightly over. Now, when you look at our numbers, uh, our our superintendent and our board have done an amazing thing. They've made meals free for the last two years, so our free and reduced lunch applications are down because we don't have to apply for that. Um, so that could that that could have swayed our numbers just that much to keep us at the two way, um, and so you know. Ultimately, uh, you know, I've heard uh, I've heard people say, you know, thinking outside the box, and I'm sure you all have. Uh, what I just want to add to that is, during this process, please look at schools like us and the other ones who are in our uh, situation, and be flexible, extend grace, um, and just do what's right for every student athlete out there. Thanks, Corey. You want to have questions for Corey? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else we didn't have or want to speak? All right, well, that the, we never had our Zoom person come back. Huh? No, he's with, he's with YouTube anyway. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, I think that concludes our public testimony. Thank everyone for coming. And we're going to take a break as a committee, and then we will move into our work session. So how much time do you want to break?